All right. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's time for another wonderful hour of the Bill Bert. Pod Cast. What's you, going on, Bert? You said something the other day that I've been thinking about nonstop. You're like, you know, this is the new normal of things is interesting. And you're like, I only really know this podcast as this. Like, I, I don't really remember when we would do it in person. I only know us Skyping. And, and I got to be honest with you, I think it's better than when we're in person. <laughs> it's definitely healthier. Yeah. I, mean, I think one of the last ones we did, we were smoking that deli dill pickle. <laughs> oh, I went off the rails hard with cigars and booze. I am on the wagon, Bill. December oh, 1st, are? all dry December, no booze, going pescatarian. I'm cleaning my life. No cigars. I'm going healthy, Bill. I got to tell you something, man. That's, and that's commendable to... Because that's that's one of the one of the hardest times. Is that a beer? <laughs> I thought that was a Guinness you just poured. Uh, no, it's I was a like, coffee. oh my god! I walked into a bit. What is that? <laughs> it's an iced coffee. Dude, that would have been the greatest setup ever. And as I'm singing your <laughs> your praises, you just bust out a black and tan, whatever the hell that looked like. Oh, oh um, I was saying the holidays is is one of the hardest things to get through. Because everybody's just like, you know, it's such, there's this weird combination where it's totally stressful. And then you go to a party and you don't have your kids there and you and your wife are like, just like ah, let's just get f***ed up and deal with it tomorrow. It's, um, it's quarantine. I can do it because of quarantine. Right. I'm, I'm really good when, when, it, when, once we go into quarantine, it's a weird thing of, you know, I, I honestly think it's because of, I'm friends with you and you say things sometimes about like, you go, you know what? I, I didn't want my, what do I want my daughter seeing me drunk all the time? And then I go, well, yeah, if I'm, if I live my life regularly, they, they very seldomly, they'll see me with a glass of wine or whatever to party, but they don't see me drunk. But if I'm in quarantine with them, I would just be getting drunk by myself on the, and I, it, it, I remember when it first started, I thought of exactly what you said. And I was like, I'm not going to drink in quarantine. And I didn't drink, the whole time we were stay at home, I never drank. And then when we started loosening up the, th the regulations, I started drinking. And it's, it's weird. As soon as quarantine starts in and when they go stay at home, safer at home, I just go, no booze. And it's, I, it's almost like a switch in my head. I go, yeah. no booze. Let's get healthy. Let's be a pescatarian. All right. Let's, let's present another scenario. Okay. <laughs> you and I are both single 20 years younger and we have no families. Like, I don't know how much weight and how many fucking empty bottles of bourbon I would have in my fucking apartment, but I would be getting like, oh, first of all, I'd be financially scared to death, but I, I would be getting, yeah, I, I, I would be, I'd have some jowls on me right now. Oh, I got the jowls right now. I did, we, I had to do a FaceTime with friends and family last night for like a Zoom party. And the mm -hmm. way my, my wife, my wife doesn't know anything about the internet. Doesn't, my wife doesn't know anything about anything. And so- I put my computer up, right? My wife's a sweetheart. I talked to her for like five, five seconds thanking you for those slippers, man. It's, you, you, got a, you got a great, great wife, man. Oh, yeah. Shout out to everyone. We've got house slippers for Christmas. My wife has a pair that she gave to Nia, the mechanics. And then I have a pair called the machine. They're still available at freewaters.com. Go to burp, burp, burp. I get freewaters.com. But, um, but yeah, the... Uh, but she is, I joke, I'm busting her balls, but like she set up the Zoom so that it was just computer on table, which ultimately looks like this. So right. the whole time, I'm just like, <laughs> hey, everybody. And I, you can see them going like, you don't look good, man. And I'm like, and I was eating a donut. And so, yeah, I'm always, I used to have a theory that women don't know anything about the internet, who this is going to be loaded. Um, that you, I can't believe you are like more misogynistic than me. That just like blows my mind. Oh, I went to therapy for it, Bill. <laughs> Ralph Cramden over there. I would say things and my wife would catch me and go, all right, you need to bring that up in therapy. I had, I one time said, she was just trying to get, like, I, I, we were looking for places. I'm driving and she's on Yelp. And she just is like, I don't wait. How do I get to restaurants? Like, how do I? I'm just getting everything. I'm getting gas stations, and I'm just like, I'm losing my mind. So I'm like, oh, it's very fucking simple. 
there's a little fork and knife in the top left. I can tell you, without looking at Yelp, I can tell you how Yelp works. There's a little fork and knife in the top left-hand corner. You hit that. Then you go to your blue dot hit, search in this area. I'm like, redo search in this area. And I go, women will never be as good at men at the internet. And she goes, that's, you can't say that. And I said, no, I actually can. And I said, and the tech companies have I proven it. I love you can't say that. It's like, I can say whatever I want, and then you can yeah. react to it. And she goes, and, I, and she, I go, the tech companies, you know why there's men there? She goes, why? I go, porn. Because fucking 20 years ago, when it was dial-up, I was learning my hand at the internet by Googling porn. I was Googling porn. Then I had to learn how to get it out of my history, <laughs> out of my browser, get it out of everything. And I go, you didn't even, I was doing it where you had to wait for the picture to load. And I go, you weren't using, you didn't, there was nothing you needed the way I needed porn. It's just, it's a sense of like necessity is the mother of all invention. I needed porn back then. And then she was like, she was like, she was like, you, you watched porn on the internet 20 years ago. And I go, that's why you're having a hard time with Yelp is because you, you don't understand technology because it wasn't a necessity of yours. Let me ask you a question. But does shopping online catch this new group up? Because women are also watching yeah. porn, I think. No. Here's, a, here's a weird thing about my misogyny is it's just them as a group. It's not them individually. Individually, yeah. I will fucking go, listen, don't listen to this fucking guy. If this fucking happens, do this. I'll try to help somebody out individually. But as a fucking yeah. group, I, I don't know what it is. They just drive me up the fucking wall. I, I, think, I, I, I think it's more, I'm more of like a contrarian. Than, oh, I, think, uh, I think that's, it's probably contrarian. And I also feel like, part of me feels like sometimes when I'm making an argument, I will say, I will say everyone, because it's a more fun argument to have than just going you. It also it's gets like, the frustration out of you. If you just yeah. like, you know, everybody's fucking saying it. Yeah. yeah, the whole world agrees with me. There's not a woman on earth. And that's a funner <laughs> way to start an argument. That was, I, was, I was fighting with, my, I was fighting with my, uh, my bus driver. I say my bus driver. He's my friend. I've been on tour with him now for like two, two and a half years. And I love him. Yeah, you guys are friends at this point. If you can have arguments and still keep working together. At that point, like, oh. the, the, it's been blurred. Oh, yeah. It's been way blurred. We had an argument last night, yesterday, driving home from San Diego. On he whether or not out, you're driving. Yeah, it's been blurred. <laughs> <laughs> we had an argument on whether or not uh, this is a very <laughs> this is a hot button topic, but I have never been in a in a train. I have never run a train on anyone, and I'm just not a train well, guy. I, I never understood what is in it for the guy. Uh, okay, I actually said you can I have one on one sex, or it could be you and forty other dicks. Yeah. And then and the I whole said, time in your head, like, is she cool with this? The whole thing just. <laughs> <laughs> is she cool? That's what I said. I go, I go, Ron, I think it's cultural. I don't think, I think that's like a, might be just a black dude thing. And he go, and he got pissed and he goes, that's racist. And I was like, no, no, I'm just saying like, I, and then I was like, I just like saying everyone. Like, I just go, I'm sure there's white guys that run trains on girls. I'm certain there are. But in my say, I'm trying like, if we're going to talk big numbers, like that was never something me and my friends did. And then, and then, and I, I go, you're saying that it was commonplace where you grew up. So I'm saying culturally. And he was like, he was like, no. And I, I remember, I won't say their names, but they're friends of ours. One of the, and I only say that, I don't think that a problem. wants to thing. go second. <laughs> I, don't the I mean, by the time you're eight, her, her vag is so full of pre-cum. If you're lucky, it's just, I mean, what the fuck are you sticking oh your dick in? You're just, you're suggesting they don't come inside her. I assumed everyone just came inside her. Yeah, dude. I mean, I, I'm not in that world. I don't want to be in that world. Never. Never would I want my daughters ever to have that ever happen to them. I think it's, I'm so against, I'm so trains. anti trains. I am taking is, a hard line stance on trains. <laughs> that was like that old Patrice joke. <laughs> he goes... He's, do you remember this? He said, I was talking to my girl, and I was like, you ever been in a threesome? She's like, yeah, two guys. He goes, no, bitch, that's a train. <laughs> that's hilarious. A threesome, two girls and a guy. A train. You were in a train. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 
I remember. I remember. Dude, I, I just not wired that way. I knew. I I had a, a a friend outside the business. You know, they used to do that. They do two on one chicks, and they would try to make each other laugh in the middle of it, like she'd be like in the doggy style position. One guy's getting blown, and the other guy is banging a doggy style. And he'd be like, don't look at him, don't look at him. And then you just look up and the guy would be like making a face and try and make him laugh. Like it, they, they got, and I was saying to him, do you guys realize how disgustingly comfortable you are with each other? Yeah, I, 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 I don't want to know I, any, I don't want to know any man like that. <laughs> I don't know a man like that. And I don't ever want to know a man. Well, like I mean, that. I don't like Bert. I don't want to know you like that. No. I don't want to know your sounds. <laughs> I don't. By the Dude, way, this I, is so fucking gross. It's this so is gross. My, this is my impression of me and you in a train. Me going, is that okay with you? Are you like that? Tell me what you like. And Bill going, shut the fuck up. Stop talking. <laughs> no, no, that would be me, dude. That would be yeah. me. That would be yeah. me also. No, dude, I, I. I, can, this, I was that was the thing. thing. I was talking to another comic about that. We were talking about all these fucking comics getting in trouble. And we were just sitting there. It was always that, that fucking, like, the second there was any ripple in the water, it's just like, I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. Going oh. back to the room. I, uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm like that aggressively. I, I would be the guy in the train going, you're sure you're cool with this? And they'd be like, shut the fuck up. I wouldn't Stop be in asking. it. Yeah. I wouldn't be in it. And then they'd all tease me and say I was gay. And I'd be like, all right, I'm gay. I was told you, you I was and all those dicks have a good time in that room. In front of the Boston <laughs> Comedy Club. In front of the Boston Comedy Club, three black comics that were may and unnamed asked me about trains. And I, I was, because I was the party animal guy. And they assumed I just ran trains on chicks all the times. And I was like, and I was like, I've never run. And, and one person who we all know very well, but I just won't say his name, said, that might mean you're gay. If you've never been in a train, that might mean you're gay. And I was like, I don't think so. And they're like, nah. And then everyone, it was all black comedians. They just started agreeing. You're probably just gay. That's what it is. And I was like, what? And they're like, only gay guys won't run trains on chicks. And I was like, hang on. Where is this? Yeah, that's that macho thing. That I can I can fuck with other guys watching. It doesn't affect me because I'm so into this pussy. It, it, go, it pushes through the gay zone, comes oh. back around to straight again. But there's something inherently homoerotic going on there. There's a there lot is. of layers to it, man, and it's it's this is above my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> it's like back in the day. I remember um, some buddies of mine were going down to Brazil. I know these like, buddies. You got to go down there, and it's just like I I can't go down there because I'll never come back. Fuck you, fucking talk. You coming back? It's like oh, physically I would come back, but it's just I don't want to do that. And also, I was dating a sweetheart at the time, and I was just like I I I, I can't. I'm not going to a third world country and paying money to have sex with some of the, the daughters of some of the poorest people on the planet. And then coming yeah. back talking shit about it like I just hit a fucking three-pointer with two seconds left on the clock. The daughters of some of the poorest people on the planet. Yeah, it's just like I just <laughs> never under, understood. And they try to say that bullshit. Well, Bill, you're paying for it here. You got to take him to a movie. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> they have options here. Oh, they have options. So fucking funny. Yeah, I just was, ne I never, uh, that's one of the smartest fucking decisions. And I've made a lot of dumb ones. That was one of the smartest decisions I have ever made was not to go down there and do that. Um, and it was funny. They used to take pictures and shit. Yeah. yeah. You know, when they were down there, you just saw the evil. They were like, like trying to smile next to a statue. <laughs> I remember hearing. You just see it. Tonight. You saw the emptiness of what they were doing. All right, if you're going to keep drinking, I, I'm going to have my after-workout smoothie here. Do you work out today? Yeah, the first time, because this hotel, there's, like, nobody in it. And <clears> there's <throat> nobody down the gym. If there's anybody in the gym, I won't fucking go in. I don't know what this is. This keeps my pubes glowing. <laughs> what, uh, what do you do when you go in the gym? Ugh. Ugh. What is that? Is that, uh, uh, what is that mango? Who's with you on the road? Who did you bring with you? I got Dean Del Rey. 
And then I got club soda, Kenny, who got me this, who I'm going to tell him, what in the fuck did you get me mango for? He does shit like that. Club soda, Kenny is one of the coolest dudes. He's one of the funniest motherfuckers ever. And I guarantee you he got that one because that was the, uh, the weirdest one. How, would, how great would it be? I got soda? you a mango smoothie. Enjoy, sweetheart. <laughs> how great would a club soda, Kenny book be? I was going to say a club soda, Kenny doll, and you just pull the string. <laughs> and he just goes, excuse me, mister. I love when he does that. You know, I told you all those stories, right? No, Being no, no. in the no, middle no, of Scotland. I, I love, let me, I'll, I'll, before I start, you start this, I want to say it's the little things in life that mean a ton to me. And I remember the first time I did O&A and I was scared. I was nervous. I didn't know anyone there. Uh, Club Soda Kennedy, Club Soda Kennedy was so nice to me. He said, hey, Bert, welcome to the show everyone's really excited to have you have a great show and you just yeah. like and like no one was talking to you this back when they were all fighting and no one spoke and it was just like that one person wait tell <laughs> i think me they were everyone. always fighting yeah tell me tell me good club of soda kenny stories just quick little silly things that he would do i remember we were doing we, me and verzi were doing essentially the midwest of europe one of my might be my favorite tour i ever did i got to see all these amazing countries and cities that I'd always heard about, Prague, Budapest, Warsaw, all these cities in Germany. It was amazing. And um, Vienna. I remember one point we were, we were taking a train. He goes, uh, I go, how are we getting down to this next gig? And Kenny's like, oh, we're taking a train. And Verzi goes, what kind of train? And, and, and Kenny goes, a choo-choo train, Paul. <laughs> And it was hilarious because it was like cold as shit, which was another thing that I just think that I really enjoyed about being over there because it was really, it was during the winter time and it was really cold. And I'd watched so much stuff about World War II, everything I could see, Ken Burns, the war, and you, I'm just being where it happened and just feeling like what a bitch I was on a train platform and just knowing that the Russians were like even colder, dug in, you know, with, with the kind of footwear that they had back there and these people plowed through this. And it's just, you know, I don't know. I, 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 find, uh, I find all of that, like, fascinating. So um, it was a really, like, fun tour. But, dude, Club Soda Kenny was just, he was hilarious. He was fucking hilarious. We would walk in, you know, they would, they would just walk in and, and they would speak there, blah, 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 and he would just go, Hello. <laughs> Oh. Excuse me, Mister's my favorite one. Excuse me, Mister. I'm not from around here. He would say that because we're just so clearly American and like obviously we're speaking English. And, he, oh. and, he, and just the look on people's faces, like, is this guy fucking serious? I don't know how he keeps a straight face. It's he's the most deadpan dude I've ever met in my life, but he has it down, which is so great when you finally make him laugh and he actually breaks. Excuse me. God bless you. Um, I was in I was in Paris or in France uh, a few years must be like five years ago six years ago and I was freezing and I, my dad called I said what's up he goes nothing where are you at and I said I'm in France I said it is cold as shit here dad I'm like breaking down I, I feel like I, I want to just call it a day and go back to my hotel room my dad goes it's funny I have your grandfather's diary and he said the coldest day he ever had in Paris, in France was he was in the trench warfare and he was poured some ice in his helmet so he could shave and he had to take the razor and break the ice in the water the water formed as ice and he had to break the ice oh my god to to get the water onto his razor and i went wow i feel like a pussy <laughs> it made me feel like a pussy and i wasn't even bitching about the cold in france my dad tells me those that my dad's told me that story. My dad tells me like five stories every time I see him, like just like he's never told them to me. I, I wonder have if, a story. I, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 no. You go, you go. I, I was done. I was gonna say I wonder if that's dementia. <laughs> oh, I have a uh I got one for you. I shaved in cold water for almost like ten years straight. Cause I watched the the dirty dozen. And they used to make them shave in cold water, and those were all tough guys. 
And it was something that I did. I don't know. I got, I it wasn't even like a conscious, like decision. That was like a subconscious thing. It was one of those things that I'm going to do this to make myself tougher. So all of this bullshit that's happened to me will fucking roll off my back easier. It was fucking weird. I did it to try to make myself tougher. It didn't work, but like, and then one day I was just like, the fuck am I doing? From like 17 to 27, I shaved in cold water. Jesus Christ. And then, and then I finally put hot water on my face. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm a fucking weird person, man. As I hold up a mango smoothie. The, uh, so this is the first, is this your first trip away from the, your, your new one? Yeah, it's the first time. The, the, this is the second day of my son's life. I haven't been with him. And yesterday, of course, I get to FaceTime and he was staring and then he like broke into the big smile. Dude, my heart was like the Grinch. My heart was just like, oh my God, I can't take it, dude. I can't take how cute my kids are. I just, I just want to, my, my, my son is doing the, he's doing the commando crawl now. Um, and he's really strong, like gets all up on all fours and he's rocking. He starts screaming and stuff like he's all excited. And then the other day he moved the right arm. I was like, oh shit, it's going to happen. And then he just literally face planted, you know, the heads <laughs> are so big, <laughs> just face plants on the rug. He shook it off though. He shook it oh. off, man. He's, uh. He's, yeah, he, they're both uh, amazing kids. My daughter said to me the other day, we were sitting down for dinner, and she goes, Dada, she goes, I like being a big sister. I was just like, ah. yeah, she's a riot, man. That's she's crazy, man. You think about it. You, you, had, you had him in quarantine. You've spent every single day with him. Like, we, you would have never had that opportunity if, if things weren't no. the way they are. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's ridiculous, like, having kids. You just want to put them in your chest in your heart it's it's the craziest thing ever so like my funny. wife is already establishing herself as the disciplinarian and i'm just like the like the older kid that never moved out <laughs> <laughs> oh can i tell you what i got a joy today i have a hard time getting rid of t-shirts i have a lot of t-shirts and a lot of them are ones i picked I up know, they're so sentimental dude i get a I have a great modest mouse t-shirt i got at the concert it's a green t-shirt it says modest and then mouse, and then there's a buffalo in the middle. You can't get rid of that. You went to the show. I can't get rid of it. It's the greatest shirt. I've got, the, I've got some of the greatest shirts, but a lot of them I got when I was smaller, and I was, like, dating Leanne, and I was 186 pounds. And, and so oh. yesterday. Well, there's your goal, dude. There's your goal, to be able to fit into your Modest Mouse T-shirt. <laughs> no, I got a better one. I got it. it, it this made me – this made me – well up i wonder if i have a i wonder if i have the picture i bet i do hold on the um i think it's just floating around oh that's not it i uh Dude, that's <clears> such <throat> a great old school looking chair that looks like the chair oscar goldman sat in on the six million dollar man yeah it's i just bought it i got it they finally got chairs back in uh in fucking target and all that places all the good chairs ergonomic chairs were gone because of uh covid you couldn't get a good chair <clears throat> i'll find it anyway now, who, who saw that coming did somebody Chair. hoard chairs and then get shamed chairs and weights you cannot find a free weight if anyone's got free weights i'm looking to buy up to 50 pounds with a rack anyone can hook me up with, up with some free weights i would World love it fitness. i want to, I want to get the old school ones bill that they used to have in high school that were like smelled like pennies and the, and and they had the they when you'd click them they go tink, tink, you know they were like the plates oh yeah I, yeah 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 i wanted to get those and then uh and but I, I you can't find them anywhere anyway here's back to my back to my uh back to What's my up, uh, buddy? look at that dog oh wait you see the new dog the new dog is fucking adorable anyway so I have these shirts. I can't get rid of any of them. Yesterday we are. I'm with the girls. We're doing. We're moving stuff out of this garage, and uh, and Georgia has on a shirt. It's this. It's a shirt I bought. A concert shirt I bought in Nashville. All you. All you can see. I forget what band it is, but it's, it says Nashville above the top of it. It's a badass shirt. Black old school shirt. She's wearing it, and underneath it, she's wearing a waffle. Like a what are those waffle shirts that? 
that used to keep you warm. You know, remember those? Thermal. The waffle thermal. Right. And I look at it and I go, hey, is that my shirt? She goes, yeah. She goes, it's a cool shirt. And I was like, yeah, it is a cool shirt. She goes, you have a lot of cool shirts. And I was like, wait, do you want some of my old shirts? And she goes, can I have them? And I was like, hold on. And then I go, wait, where did you get that waffle shirt? And she goes, it's in your closet. It's cool. It's got holes all in it. It's badass. And I went, baby, I wore that waffle shirt the first night I did stand up. The first night I did stand up, I wore that waffle shirt with a, I said, that waffle shirt was like, you know how you get lucky? You go, I did good, so I'm going to wear that. I said, I wore that waffle shirt for the whole first year I did stand up. Like, that was my shirt. There's a big hole in the thing now. And I go, you're wearing, and, and then she goes, goes, she goes, oh, cool. And so then I got, they left. We, we have them going to school at a, at a man, we're, we're building a new house. We, we have a man cave that's done. We send them there to go to school and it's so much easier. I went into my thing. I grabbed my modest mouse shirt. I went, I put it in her door. I grabbed this great, I grabbed all these X and I was like, this kid's going to be fucking so happy. So yeah. that's my, you new know, I, I, if I, I should show you the shirt I first wore. Um, when, when, when I, I, I got it like in one of those vacuum sealed things. Like I have all my shirts that I wore and all my specials, <laughs> like retired jerseys. And then the first shirt I ever wore. And I have the stagecoach shirt from this episode of Breaking Bad that I did. And I have it all shrunk wrap into the thing. Um, I, I got to show you, dude. It's like, it is such a classic early 90s. It's like lime green with these thin blue stripes. Remember that shit? That, yeah. it's, it's like a Z Cavaricci like style shirt. So that was like my go-to shirt. I had a good set the first time. And then um, I, I felt like it was a lucky shirt. Sure. And then I started bombing after like my second Ooh. show. And then I kind of got past that. I was just like, nah, I don't think there's any mojos in the shirts. I think I just stink. <clears throat> and I, I got to get better at this. So I retired shoes. Shoes are what I would retire because I, I don't, I stop wearing shirts. But uh, I have the shoes from all my specials. And then I have the shirt still that I wore the first time I got a deal. And I have the shirt still that I wore the second time I got a deal. Those, those, those sets. I have both uh -huh. those shirts. Uh, it's so crazy. I, I, and then, you know what that reminds me of? Somebody was saying that maybe the um, that comedy club, um, not the Magic Castle, the uh, Comedy Magic Club down at Hermosa Beach yeah. needs some help. And I was thinking of doing a show for them in the top parking lot. They got that parking garage right above it. They should do a fucking show right there. Let's do it. I'll do it. I'll go with. I'll, I'll go down there. We'll All right. I'll reach out to Mike Lacey. See if we can knock. Hey, it out tell him me. I got a curse though. <laughs> yeah, you were outside. We're not in the club. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. Dude, you're working with me. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, reach out to them. Let them know I'm in. Okay. All right. I will. Because um, he has all of that memorabilia. Really. Um. Dude, no, he has crazy. He has uh, George Carlin, rest his soul, went down there one time and he saw the memorabilia that he had. And he was like, you know, I have the whole outfit that I wore um, for the album cover of Class Clown. It's been in a suitcase under my bed for like 30 years. You want it? And he was like, yeah. So, I mean, he was trying to start like, like if he started a museum, if he had like money, like, the stuff that that guy has, he's taped every single set. He doesn't, you know, use them for profit, but he has, if you did a set there in the 90s, 80s, 70s, yeah. he has it. He just right, has to find it. So he here's has- a question. Here's a question. What, what outfit would you buy? You, now, you, and let's, let's, let's say, let's put a caveat on this, because I know that you're willing to donate money, meaning, meaning I know you're more apt to- in an auction, bid on something if the money's going to a good place than to just spend money on yourself. I had a dream you bought a helicopter last night. Anyway, um, <laughs> I had a dream you bought a helicopter and you go, it was fucking cheap, Bird. It was so cheap, but the wheels are too heavy. It can't fly very far. It can only fly 900 miles. And I was like, for real? And you're like, ah, I fucked up. I fucked up. 900 miles would be great. Yeah. So, <laughs> ready? You're in an auction and they say, we have two suits available 
Richard Pryor's all red suit from Live on the Sunset Strip or Steve Martin's all white suit? I got to go Pryor. Really? Yeah. Sam Kennison's trench coat? Okay. Or let's see what we got up here. If you say something from Dice, I'm going to have to flip a coin. Oh, Dice's jacket that says Dice Man on the back or Sam Kinison's trench coat? I think I got to do the Dice coat. I don't know. But Dice, Dice is still alive and I can talk to him. I can't talk to Sam. Maybe I would talk, take the Sam thing just to have some sort of connection with him. How much you think? Because that? he's the one who taught me about dynamics and stand up more than anybody I ever saw. And George also, Carlin. George Carlin mm -hmm. taught me about mic control, and Kinnison taught me dynamics. Explain to me. Well, um, all right. I would say George Carlin had one of the greatest voices of any comedian I ever heard. And he could yeah. go, he had this register from way down low to really up high. So when he did characters and voices, if he had like a radio broadcaster voice that he, he was not only a master of stand-up, he was also a master of how he used his voice. And when you learn things like that, um, you can, in a very economic way, control the audience by just raising and lowering your voice. Lowering your voice, you can draw them in. Yeah. You know, you bring your voice up, you can make them go back like that. I, um, I, I watched, I saw Cosby before all that bullshit went down and he just had us on a string. And really yeah. like, I think comics, we have a tendency to listen to the material and not see the, the mechanics around it. And, and Sam Kinison, I think I've told this before, there's two clips. There's a clip of him, I don't know if he was just in a bad mood or whatever, but it was before he was before he had the trench coat, and he had uh, he had like fingerless gloves on or something. He was dressed all in black, and he had these sunglasses. I mean, he looked like a cocaine cowboy, man. He looked like just like a fucking cat. like he had a gun with the silencers. What he looked like, and he's just on stage, just screaming, his blood curdling, ah, just screaming all of this shit. And I remember my wife came into the room. She was just like, uh, Jesus. She's like, oh, God, what are you watching? I go, this is Kinnison before he learned how to control it. And then he had, so he had this incredible, powerful voice. But if you just come on stage and do that from the yeah. second you're on until the end, like people about eight minutes in are like, dude, I, I just can't listen to you scream anymore. So it was when he went all the way down. And we're starting like, hey, buddy, how you doing, huh? Are you married? This your wife? Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? How long have you been married for? He would just do that whole thing and then just, well, why don't you just remember this face? And, ah! and then he would just he yeah. would bring everybody down. And, and it, it was like, it was almost disturbing when he would ask those questions because you could feel something was going to happen. Yeah. But it caused the whole crowd to just shut up and listen and, and then take that little ride of, where the fuck is this guy going? Like this, this is getting crazy. And then the release was the joke and his frustration of being married or whatever, you know, some woman who, who broke his heart. Just watching people do stuff like that. Um, then you don't have to like prance around the stage and make all these giant movements to, to feel like you're keeping their control. You can literally do it with just uh, moving the microphone closer or further away or pulling yourself off, you can do shit like that. And then also, um, you know, like you can create moods with your voice going up or down. You can really create, like last night, uh, Dean Del Rey was on stage and he was doing this bit about people with bad backs. And he went into this character for like uh, just one line. And I just, I was like, oh my God, what the fuck is that? That's a whole new color in his act. And then he immediately went back to the stuff that he usually does. Yeah. But you felt the crowd like going like, oh man, I wanted more of that. Yeah. So when, we, when I got off stage, I was like, dude, that right there, that little thing there, you can blow that out on this run 
Just see, you know, just blow it out until you're just bombing and it's quiet. I don't give a fuck. But just because that's a skill that he can do. He just has to develop it. So that's kind of, it's kind of like, you know, I always look like, like sports, like hoop. You know, you can't go to your left. You start going to your left. You know, you, you got no baseline moves. You just practice those or you, you suck at outside shooting. Whatever, whatever your sports analogy is, is you start adding those things to your little stand-up uh, repertoire there. And then you can just sort of, then you can start applying those elements to things and build shit, you know, yeah, it, it just gives you so many more options rather than being like, hey, did you see this? The fuck is with that? You know, I think, I think the, I'm curious to see what doing all these outdoor shows has done to my act because I'm, I'm, a, as I'm sure you know, and I don't know how, but like it, when they're inside cars, which has been lately, and I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm done touring, but like we just did San Francisco and it was so cold. Everyone just kind of stayed in their car. They have a great time, but I know you, I, I feel like I do my energy and what you said is up here. And then when I've done something intimate, I feel like I'm like, oh fuck, you really pick up on that not instinctually sometimes. And then it affects how you perform. And then we did like an intimate one in an amphitheater. And I was like, oh, I can, I can slow this down. I can. Like you can feel the energy and you're like, wow, I can't wait to get back. I can't wait till the vaccine. Yeah, that's been a hard, I'm, I'm hoping I'm not going to lose. I think you, you got muscle memory will come back, but like I've been yeah. having, uh, you know, you just feel like, you know, you're at some county fair standing on a picnic table and some of these things and it's, you know, you know, traffic driving by and shit. Yeah. You know, where I'm yeah. performing here, we're like on final Final approach for fucking Love Field. So <laughs> these fucking trains <laughs> <laughs> just sitting there landing, 18 wheelers going by. But like, this people can hear it because I said, Are you guys having a good time? And they went nuts like they're having a good time. So then I just had to adjust, like, okay, they can hear me fine. I just can't hear them laughing because it's just the way it was set up. It was like this little plaza, grassy area. And I feel like the laughs were just. Are they, are they in cars or are they in picnic benches? They're sitting on blankets. Yeah. Uh, it's like an amphitheater type of thing. It's like a theater, and then there's like a little place where it's, it's definitely like a music type venue. But the That's shows cool. were fun. Um, they're sort of sitting down in this thing, and you're above them. And then around the outside, there's other people sitting there. So, um, that's awesome. It's, yeah. It's been, yeah, dude, I'm just thankful to be, uh, to be working and that people still give a shit enough to come out and see me, to be honest with you. So, uh, I got this run doing Dallas, then Austin. Um, you, you doing uh, Joe's podcast when you're there? I'm hoping I'm to. He mentioned it, but I know, you know, he gets like fucking astronauts on, on that thing. So if he's got room for me, I'll do it. But um, I'm definitely going to hang out with him, try to, you know, socially distance or whatever. Because I got, I have a, um, Spade has a new show and I'm coming back and to be a guest. Oh, what's, him. for real? Yeah, he's got like a, some sort of, uh, talk show type thing. I think it's for Netflix. So I just got to make sure. I mean, I want to get sick anyways because I have kids. So I just got to make sure. Yeah. You no. Know, um, I had a buddy of mine in Dallas just asked if I could hang and I was just like, I can't do it, dude. I can't. It stinks. It really does stink. And I, uh, and it stinks now because you're like, God, I feel like we're at the tail end because we know there's a vaccine in sight, but you just got to keep your foot on the throttle and be like this. There's rules. There's still rules. I'm going to take the bullet for the world. I'll be the first guy who takes it if you give it to me. Will you take the vaccine first? Well, I actually went to my hat doctor the other day, and uh, he said they already gave it to him. Wait, we have the same heart doctor. For real? Yeah, yeah. Don't say his name. I don't like saying people's names. But, yeah. So he uh, he said, I said, was there side effects? Because I heard you feel like you kind of have a cold for a couple of days. He goes, no, it's just more like a flu shot. You just feel like a pain in your arm, and you were fine. So I don't give a fuck if the side effects is that I'm fine with a Ponzi scheme and a fucking – yeah. crazy government and i'm just sitting there like hey man this is fine with me dude <laughs> i don't give a fuck i see him in two i weeks. need to calm down the uh yeah i'll take the i'll take the flu shot i just got a thing today that said uh morbidly obese people will get it first and i was like wait maybe i'm gonna keep the weight on go get vaccinated then lose the weight lose the weight by oh running. i see that that makes sense it's like boarding a plane 
<laughs> women with children's people who can't stop eating uh did i say children's <laughs> <laughs> people can't stop eating fucking you know hot dogs and cookies yeah i'm gonna put on some for this country they got all those reasons yeah it's it stinks when people get it and don't feel symptoms and then they come out publicly and they're like uh like yeah man i got it it was i didn't it wasn't even a problem because i feel like that makes everyone go like well then what, what are we worried about and then you hear the one horror story. There's a comic in uh, a comic out of L.A. Uh, um, uh, Jimmy Cholo, I think his na- I think his name was. I just read about it. He was out of East L.A. comic, and he got it. And he was starting to talk about it on Instagram, and he passed away. And I'm like, man, you got to. You never know if you're getting get the good one or the bad one. And so, I got a buddy of mine outside of this business. He thinks it's a hoax. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> one of his relatives just got it, which is fucking hilarious. So it's just like, oh, I guess like you look. I love a conspiracy theory, but this is just too big. Like the amount of people that would have to be on board to keep this lie going and then not say shit about it is just like off the fucking charts. They're lying to you, man. Oh. Who? I thought I had a thousand fucking people in on this lie that are like, how many people run shit? The entire infrastructure of the world is, is fucking in on this this thing. And we're all going to keep our mouths shut. Deal. (laughs) Deal. I thought I had it last night. I was laying in bed and I was like, God, man, I'm fucking sweating. Like I don't have chills or anything, but like I'm sweating and I'm fucking like, I feel achy. And then I go, Oh no, that's right. I've just been partying my balls off for a month straight and i just came out of san francisco san diego where we partied we had one show at like six o'clock every night and we just were like for three nights we're like oh we get home at eight just fucking make dinner drink like savages get in the hot tub smoke cigars go down to the beach it was out of this world and then i'm like oh no i'm why does that kill you why does that have to kill you what does god have against fun yeah why do you just have to fucking be a goody two fucking shoes and just sit there and read a book and get eight hours sleep or else you're just going to fucking croak at 50. It's just like, why can't you just, you know, there is something to be said to those people who I, I really have, uh, now that I have to be a fucking a good boy, I really envy people that just don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, you want a pizza? All the toppings. <laughs> you want to get some donuts for dessert? Fuck yeah. Drink some bourbon and a cigar. You know, oh. smoke a little crack. Fucking whatever. Let's just have a good time. You know what I almost did? Like, I, this is, I was thinking about this last night. We were unloading that garage, and I knew I was going on the way. I went on the, I started the wagon yesterday, right? And I said to myself, m- one of my favorite beers I've had this entire year in 2020 was... The first beer I had in quarantine where they loosened up constri- controls and you could be around other people outdoors. We had friends over to our, our backyard and it was socially distant. I think the kids were watching a movie outdoors. Everyone was socially distant and the sun was setting and I had a cold beer. I had an ice cold beer and I got the first rush of alcohol buzz. And, I, and, and, and what's beautiful about it, Bill, is... I had quit drinking, but I hadn't quit drinking because I had problems with it. I quit drinking because I just quit drinking, right? So there was no shame involved with that that buzz. That buzz didn't come with the, like, I remember hearing a story of one comic who was sober and he, st- he took a drink, like, after, like, three years, and he goes, oh, the old me is back. <laughs> I just had this great yeah. feeling of, like, oh, man, I forgot how awesome a beer buzz is. Like a nice cold beer buzz, and I loved it. And yeah, so I don't I'm even. I'm, I'm trying part. to remember uh, what it feels. I will say though, I have this new thing though. I like I went, I did the shows last night, and then the second I got back, no, the second it was over, we just went straight to the hotel room, and I was so excited to just be back in the hotel room. 
I didn't do any damage, you know, and I went to sleep around midnight, woke up at 4 a.m., which was weird because I'm on central time. And then I was like, oh, fuck, fuck. really, Bill? Like, what, what demon is running around in your head? Why are you awake? And I just, you know, laid there for like 10 minutes. And then I slept till 10 o'clock. Oh. So I basically got almost 10 hours sleep, dude. I feel amazing right now. I That's really a good, do. I look forward, I, I, I didn't sleep super good last night because I was on my first night not boozing. But, and it, I won't sleep great tonight, but that was, you just got to bite those bullets. And then the third night, I'll sleep solid. But what I love, what I love about not drinking, what I uh -huh. love is going to sleep at midnight, waking up at five and going, eh, I'm up. I'm not hungover. I can do this. I can get through this. Let's make a cup right. of coffee and see the sunrise. I love that feeling. As opposed to if you've been partying and you fall asleep at midnight, wake up at five, you're like, oh, this day's going to fucking suck. Oh, get on the right. treadmill, fat boy. <laughs> You know what I used to do? It was so stupid. I used to just stay out all night if I had a long flight, just so I could sleep on the flight. And now I'm hearing, like, the long-term damage of not getting sleep is sort of the big thing now. You know what's really good for you is, is like, reading a book. Oh, God, this is so pathetic. Reading a book before you go to buy. I got a great one for you. Oh, tell it to me. Jim Carrey wrote a book called Memoirs and Misinformation. Dude, if you thought that this guy was brilliant, which I don't know why you wouldn't, like the, the level of this guy's brain, um, this, this book just like, it's sort of like mocking celebrity, his own celebrity, the business, human behavior, uh, just, you know, I don't know, it's, it's, it's. This is it right here? Yeah. All right, I'm buying it. It's, it's, um, it's incredible. It's incredible. I'm about 80 pages in because, uh, you know, I got two kids young. So I, 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 I was supposed to bring it on the road and I was going to finish it. And um, I didn't. Like an can, idiot. I tell you what, can I tell you what book I just bought? I just bought, uh, and I'm excited to read, and I kind of want to get this guy on the podcast. I think, I, I think you and him, I think he'd be a great, great podcast guest. Okay. His name is Hunter um, S. Thompson. No. <laughs> no, it is shit. Let me see. It is Wright Thompson, oddly enough. Right, that's why I said Hunter. Wright Thompson. And he wrote a he wrote a story a, a book called Pappy Land, a story of family, fine bourbon, and things that last. And it's about I'm gonna I'll read the book and see if, if we'd like it, but he, I think he's the head writer for ESPN and uh, like he runs ESPN.com or something, or he's like the head editor for ESPN magazine, but it's a, it, it's a story about, I think it's, I, I listened to him a little bit at with Scott Van Pelt at the end of last night on, on Monday night football. Uh -huh. it's, it really is a story about his, about dads, about dads being a dad, having a dad. So I, it should be getting here today. I'll, I'll take a read and then, if we can reach out to him, I think regardless, he'd be a great guest. I think I'd love to have him on. Yeah. Um, Wright Thompson is his name, uh, Andrew. But uh, I'm getting his book. And he, I know he's doing a press tour for his books. It's like a, it's a national bestseller. It's like a number one bestseller, New York Times bestseller. So. I just think in, in just, it's inherently hilarious if you and I are talking to an author. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we don't read too much in our life, and you wrote a book. Can you help us out? Is it good? <laughs> Is you know, there, like that. Are there pictures in your book? <laughs> uh, yeah. How big's the print? You've had to have been approached to write a book before. Uh, yeah. Have you ever thought about it? Oh, I got a great book. I, I wrote a book. I oh, wrote right. a book with DeRosa and Bobby Kelly. Yeah, about how to cheat on your girlfriend. Oh. So this is what happened. This is what happened. This is such a classic showbiz story. So we, we wrote a, 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 a short film called Cheat. And uh, it was basically, it was, it was set up 
the setup is basically you think there's these three guys that are getting together to do some sort of crime. And it's really set up, blah, blah. And it just turns out, you know, this guy's girlfriend's out of, out of town and this hot chick from high school is coming to town. He wants to bang her. He doesn't want to get caught. So he calls his two piece of shit friends. They try to help him out. So we make it. We submit it to Tribeca. It gets in at Tribeca and it fucking does great. So with that, they go, um, okay, what's the next thing we can do with this? So to try to market the movie, we were going to write this stupid, you know, how-to book on how to cheat on your girlfriend. And then you were supposed to get the fucking movie with the book. Yeah. And they agreed to it. And then somewhere along the line, the movie thing went away. And we just had a standalone book on how to be a piece of shit. And it was just like, this is one, this is what this is supposed to be. Dude, that was one of the hardest books to write. Cause yeah. I didn't believe it. Yeah. It was just a funny idea that became a movie. And then, okay, write the how to book. And we were just sitting there on the phone going, okay, what else? What's another chapter we can, we can write? <laughs> I mean, I would have had an easier time writing a book on sailing, right? I was like, I don't know what the fuck. I can't write a hundred. <laughs> Fucking 200 pages about this shit. But I just kept thinking, no, it's going to be good. It, and it's going to be funny because it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be a real cool thing, like this little stupid handout thing. And then you watch the movie and you realize the whole thing's just a big joke. And then, th then it became, well, it's going to be too expensive to have like a DVD. DVDs are kind of going away. Then it became a link. And then it just became, go fuck yourself. <laughs> and then it's just this dumb book. Um, and then through that, we then got a deal at FX to do a show, the three of us, because they just liked our chemistry in the movie. And um, we were just, we wrote it ourselves. We were just too green, um, which is a really a shame because uh, Joe DeRosa is a really good actor. If you watched him on, on uh, Better Call Saul and Bobby Kelly is a fucking ridiculously good actor. Yeah. Ridiculously good actor. So we we could have made a, a show. It was just one of those showbiz things. So you were just we too did green. do that. You guys were too green of actors at the time. I didn't know how to write a show. Like now, I could sit down, and I know how to do it. After you know all of these years in efforts for family, like I just had you know. I mean, I can crank out a fucking first draft of efforts for family in like two days. You give me an outline, I can just. I, I know, like, I just know how to do it now. I've been sitting in that room and, and, and I'm being surrounded by writers. You just learn how to do it. So um, now I, I could have taken, you know, we would have had a better idea. It was still a good idea. I could have wrote way better dialogue. I understand. One of the great things that I learned about writing a scene is uh, come in late, get out early. It's such a simple thing. It avoids extra fucking lines that add pages. And it's just like, you, it, and it keeps the fucking thing going. Yeah. It's like, you don't need to be like, hey, Bert, how are, oh, is that a ram's head? Oh, that's great. Fantastic. So listen, about this thing, it's like get, you get rid of all of that fucking thing. You just, what are you trying to do? What information are you trying to get in this scene? And how late into this conversation can I go and I won't lose the crowd? And then once we, we have it, and I've, and I've taken the ball from here and got it to here. And now I need to go get the fuck out of it. Yeah. And that's what, that's what keeps that. That's what makes it tight. And that's what makes a really good first draft where it's not this giant fucking gelatinous, like there's something fucking in here. Those are the worst drafts to get where you're just like, Oh my, I don't even know where to fucking start with this thing. Just burn it down and start over again. So does it, that's does it, where my, my skill level was back does then. It give you, does that give you a, I realized the other day, I think Seth Rogen is turning 40, maybe, or maybe he's turning 30. I don't know. He's really young. Dude, when you've done, he's 40? Yeah, I was going to say, dude, that guy's been doing movies for like 20 years. But my point is, like, I had a real sense of respect. I've always enjoyed his work. But, like, I was like, oh, he was making shit that I was crying laughing at when he was 20. Like when he was 20, he was working for other people. But by like 25, 26, I feel like he was doing his own shit. That's so impressive. 
When you say all you- All that stuff, Pineapple you, Express, Hot Tub Time Machine, all of that shit was like 10 years ago, right? One of those was like oh, 10 years ago. Yeah, oh, he's, I mean, Knocked Up, all, all the stuff he's done. I've always I was still living him. in New York when Knocked Up came out, but I think that Super was a bad movie, wasn't it? Yeah, but he was in it, but Super Bad was his movie. Dude, Super Bad's one of the funniest goddamn movies to this day. It's one of the funniest I've laughed. Jo Jonah Hill, when he's talking to that teacher, he's like, no offense, uh, like, and, and he's doing that rant. You realize Jonah Hill's a kid, written a movie written by, they were children when they wrote it, Seth, uh, or, uh, Seth and his partner. It's such a good fucking movie. Jonah Hill, too. He, uh, he wrote and directed a great movie. I, I just always forget the names of them. Um, about some skater kids. Mid-90s? Mid-90s, yeah. That was Dude, called, Jonah I fucking love that movie. Jonah Hill's sister, Be Beanie Fiegel, Beanie Siegel. Beanie Fiddlestein? Be yeah. Beanie Siegel, it's fucking, yeah, okay. whatever, what, I forget her name, but she's fucking awesome. She is awesome. Like, awesome. Bert, how are we in this business with our talent I like level? I'm not in this business, Bill. <laughs> I've never met one of these people. I saw Jonah Hill park down my street one time, and I was like, hey, and he went, vroom. <laughs> Yeah, you just need a little more confidence, Bert. Uh, I'm cool with I'm cool with being Bert, right. Like the, the Letterman thinks you're funny, dude. At some yeah, point, you got to feel like you arrived. You can chill a little bit, and then you won't, won't do that that fucking thing you did with Sandler. Where you're like, hey, can I just can I just say something for a second? Oh, <laughs> oh my God. I love you, man. I, I told, I've never watched that. I shut it off. I had to shut it off there. I was like, I just can't watch him do this to himself. Oh. Uh, oh. Well, we should wrap 20 this up. One of your charms, Bert. We, it's one we, of your charms. Yeah, I got a busy day. Um, you've got a whole day of hanging out in a hotel room. No, dude. I'm not hanging out. I got to fucking finish this script, and I gotta, um, I'm got i doing a promotional thing for Pete and Judd's movie. What's Pete so I have like a full day, but tomorrow I got nothing. Today is the only day on the road where I have to like, you know, I'm like an what, What's Pete and Judd's movie? Uh, the King of Staten Island. There's some oh. other thing. Oh my God, that's so funny. That's so funny. Oh my God. I thought, I thought you were talking about Pete Holmes and Judd, and I was like, shut up. What movie do they do? Hey, let's get no, Judd Pete Apatow on here one time. I'd love to have him on. Re Kay, Andrew, can you reach out to Judd? No. <laughs> I don't know Judd. You guys know Judd. He just did a movie with Judd. No. Andrew, can you reach out to Judd? Yeah, let me call him. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> Who else you want, Bert? Hey, uh, might as well get How about Pete Brad Davidson Pitt? on. Hey, 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 Andrew, can you get Brad Pitt on this thing? Get Pete Davidson on and then see if you can get Ariana Grande and we'll surprise him with her, right? That'll be good media. Oh, my God. No way. No way. Um. All right. Well, um, it's been a fun hang, Bert. It was a good podcast, Bill. I had a good time. I had a good time talking to you. You, uh, you as well, Andrew, even though you can't get us Judd Apatow. It's okay. Yeah. After the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. Uh, I am in Dallas. Thank you to everybody who's coming out in Dallas, Austin, and Houston, uh, Texas. Um, I'm going to have a good time. I'm going to have a good time out here. I don't give a shit how loud the traffic is. I'm still, I'm still giving it my all. <laughs> for my supper. All right, that's it. This has been another wonderful episode of The Bill. Bert. Pod. Yes. All right, we'll see you next time.